My name is Ben Ueda, and I'm the director of Homemade Modern, where we publish DIY instructionals for how to build your own furniture. In college, I studied architecture, but after designing a lot of houses, I wanted to get back towards the more physical part of design. And I'm going to show you how fun and easy it is to make your own furniture. We're going to start with a circular saw and show you how you can cut basic lumber to make a bench. Now, what I like about this bench is that it's fairly inexpensive to make. You can either use scrap if you already have a few pieces, or if you were to buy it, it's still probably going to be right around 20 or 30 bucks. This is a really easy project. You can probably do it in about an hour. Also have fun with it. Change it, experiment with different stains, see what you come up with. DHTV, Makers Gonna Make. So we're going to make a bench now. Now this bench would be great for a mudroom, you could use it for seating at a dining table, and it's such a quick project and you could even throw it together in time if you're having a sudden party and you needed extra seating. So these three power tools are really the only things you need and you can make all sorts of other pieces of furniture with them as well. So we're going to make it out of a 2x12 and a 2x8. So let's start with the measurements. You could make this bench as long as you want, probably up to about 8 feet. But today we're going to make one that's five feet long. So let's measure out five feet. And I'm going to use a speed square to draw a straight line across the board that's perpendicular to the edge. Now before I cut it, I'm going to raise up the board so that when I cut it with a circular saw, the blade doesn't hit the floor. So I'm just going to tilt it up, put some scraps of 2x4s or 2x3s or whatever you have lying around underneath it. Okay. Put on my safety goggles and get ready to cut. Now you can cut this freehand using the laser on the circular saw along the pencil line, but an easier way is to clamp a speed square to the board. So we're going to line up the saw blade with the pencil line and then clamp down the speed square. And this will give us a nice edge to line up the saw guide against. Okay. Next up, we're going to cut the side pieces. And we're going to cut these 16 and a half inches long. Now a good height for a bench is 18 inches, and the top is an inch and a half thick, so with 16 and a half inches that'll bring the total bench height right to 18 inches. clamp down the square. So we want the side pieces to be the same length. So I'll just use the first piece I cut to measure the second piece. All right. Line up the saw blade. Clamp down the square.
Now let's check to make sure that we got them right. Perfect. So next up I'm going to cut the center support. Now what I like about this bench, other than it being really easy, is that it's also fairly inexpensive to make. You can either use scrap if you already have a few pieces, or if you were to buy it, it's still probably going to be under right around 20 or 30 bucks. So next we're going to cut the center support. Now we want this to be three inches shorter than the top of the bench. And that's because the thickness of this wood is an inch and a half. So when we put these on either side, we're going to want the center support to be just three inches shorter than the top piece. So if the top piece was five feet, we're going to want the center support to be four feet, nine inches. Now I'm flipping the board over because I want the wide side of the saw support to rest on the big piece of the wood. Line up the saw blade. that's the last cut. Now we're ready to sand the boards and assemble the bench. So the pieces are all cut, now we're ready to start sanding the boards. And I'm going to use what's called an orbital sander, and this saves a ton of time because sanding these all by hand, ugh, it would take a bit. So what we're going to do is Velcro on these different sanding pads. You line up the holes and just press it on. Now we're going to use two different types of sanding pads. The first one is an 80 grit pad. Now what that number means is that there's 80 grains of sand per square inch on the paper. This is 220. That means it has 220 grains of sand per square inch of paper. Now what's cool about that is that this will sand much smoother and this will sand much faster. So that's why we start with the rough one, the 80, before switching to the 220. Now when, before I sand, you don't really need to push too hard on this tool, you just need to guide it and then let the weight of the tool do the work for you. So that's good for the first rough sanding. Now I'm going to flip the board over and get the other side. So now that this board is sanded with the 80, I'm going to switch to the 220. And again, make sure you line up the holes. Now the holes are important because that allows the dust to flow through the sander and into the dust collection bag. That will keep the dust from accumulating in the air and all over your workspace. That looks good for the top, now we'll switch to the side pieces. And 
And again, we'll start with the 80 grit before moving to the 220. Notice the sanding starts to go a little bit slower. Check your sanding pad. After a while they wear out and you need to switch them out. Sanding's done, time to start assembling the bench. Now that all the boards are sanded, we're ready to assemble it. So we're gonna screw this bench together. Now, we're gonna drive screws right near the edge of the board. And I'm a little bit worried that the board might split. That can happen when you screw really close to an edge. So what we're gonna do is called pre-drilling the holes. So we're gonna drill holes through this board first that are just slightly smaller in diameter than the screws. And that'll make it a little bit easier for the screw to go through the board without splitting. So let's raise this up so we don't drill into the floor. So I'm gonna pre-drill these holes. Now I'm not worried about hitting the floor because the drill bit will only go through the board and we'll still have about an inch of clearance before we hit the floor. Let's put on my safety goggles. And I'm gonna to wanna to do these holes about three quarters of an inch in from the edge of the board. So we'll make a mark here. So we're gonna make a mark about three quarters of an inch in. Now we're going to take out the drill bit and put in the driver bit, which will help us drive the screws in. Now before I put the side pieces underneath, I'm just going to get the screws started. So I'm just going to just drill them in just a little bit. And they go in real easy because we already have pre-drilled holes. Lift it up. Let's get this in first. Now I have extraordinary balancing skills, but it doesn't hurt to have an extra set of hands for this. So line up the ends. So after you drive the first screw, check again to make sure the board didn't get twisted by the drill and it's still aligned on both ends. Hold it down firmly and screw through Looks good. I just want to make sure I sunk them all the way into the surface of the wood. All right. Now let's flip it over. And 
in the center support. So this center support is going to give the whole bench strength. And it's going to screw in both to the top of the bench and to both sides. So we want to measure so we know exactly where to align the center support. So we're going to measure in four and three quarters from the edge of the board. There. And let's do that on both sides. And there. And we're going to start by screwing in from the side. So all we have to do is measure in five and a half inches. We're just going to start to screw at first. Just going to get the screw started. That way I can hold the board in place while I screw it. And once I have the board lined up, I'll apply a little pressure and drive a screw through it. Right. Now some woodworkers like to glue the wood together as well, which gives it added strength. I don't really like to do that because I like to have the flexibility, people move a lot, and it's always nice if you can take your furniture apart and build something else out of it. Once you go with glue, you're kind of permanent and you're stuck with what you got. Perfect. And now I'm just going to pre-drill the other side. Now sometimes your drill bit can get a little bit jammed with sawdust, so make sure you clean it out if you're not getting a smooth cut. I'm going to switch back to the driver bit. Just get the screw started. So line up the ends. the end in place. All right. Now I can flip the whole thing over and drive the last few screws through the other side of the bench. So again, I want to measure five and a half inches in. And once I have the board lined up, I'll apply a little pressure. and drive a screw through it. So now we just need to drive a few more screws 
through the top of the bench and into the center support. And we just need to measure five and a half inches in to do that. One there. Now these holes are in away from the edge, so we don't really have to worry about the wood splitting as much. So we don't need to pre-drill. Hold the screw in place. And there we go. Now we're ready to stain and finish it. So the bench is assembled, and now we're gonna add a coat of stain. Now I'm gonna use a gray stain, and it's gonna look great. So I'm just gonna use a foam brush, it's disposable. Dip it in, and spread it on. Now this is a really easy stain to use. It's a pretty thin, finish so you don't have to really worry about it being uneven. So just brush it on with the grain. Pretty quick, but it's also so you tend not to see brush strokes with this uh, particular product. Keep layering it on if you uh, want to make it a little bit more gray and make it less sort of striped looking. And this really isn't a protective coating. This is just gonna change the color of the wood. But it's not quite as thick as a paint, so you'll still see the wood grain through the stain. Now you could add a clear coat on top of this, and that would add another layer of protective finish. But I tend not to like my wood to feel like plastic, and so I just go without. Now sure, it'll dent and could get a little bit dirty, but you can always just touch it up if you have a little bit of extra stain on hand. Almost done. I'm going to stain everything, even the underside, both sides of the legs, and make sure I get every inch of it. And then I'll need to let it sit a couple hours before I move it. And you definitely probably want to let it sit the full eight hours that the manufacturer recommends before you sit on it. And we're done bench looks great. Now, we can't quite sit on it yet. We probably want to let it wait the full eight hours before we come into heavy contact with it. This is a really easy project. You can probably do it in about an hour, but also have fun with it. Change it, experiment with different stains, and see what you come up with. I have the perfect place to put it. <laughs>